Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 6 starts now. Michigan is one of just five states in the nation where COVID cases are trending up, but a new treatment option may be on the way. A local man is jailed and facing charges of attempted murder, and he happens to be a church pastor in Ferndale. And breaking right now, digging is underway in the search for Dee Warner, a Lenawee County woman who went missing earlier this year. The FBI, state and local police are searching through fields and farms in Lenawee County in connection to her disappearance. New video into the newsroom here shows crews starting to dig. We don't know if they found anything or why they chose this particular spot. 52 year old Deanne Warner was last seen at her home in Franklin Township back in April. At that time, investigators searched hundreds of acres but found nothing. Today they were back out using dogs, ground penetrating radar, and now big machinery as you see here. Uh, investigators say today's search is not about new tips in the investigation, but rather timing. There's no tips that, no big tip that, uh, that facilitated this. Really what this is, is kind of a culmination of all the work that we've been doing over the summer. So um, we've been pretty much following up on every, every lead and all the information. And this just seemed like a, a prudent time to come out. We will continue to stay on top of the search and let you know of any new developments. Now to the arrest of a local pastor in a county just up past Michigan's Thumb area. He's accused of trying to use his car as a weapon against sheriff's deputies. This happened in Aranac County, just off the Alger exit of I-75. Victor Williams live tonight with more on what happened. And uh, Victor, it appears this isn't his first brush with the law either. Not at all, Jason and Kimberly. It's because of that reason that church service will never be the same. And I was like shocked when I heard about it. 57 year old David Jones is facing charges of attempted murder after allegedly trying to hit deputies with a vehicle he was believed to have been operating while under the influence. Never saw anything out of the ordinary. Jones just so happens to be a pastor of Hilton Oaks Baptist Church in Ferndale. However, Jones's last round of problems happened Wednesday around one in the morning. That's when deputies got a call about him doing some suspicious activity at a convenience store in Arnack County. Apparently, when deputies made it to the scene, Jones did not want to be cooperative and allegedly decided to drive his car across a busy street, ramming it straight into the business across the way. Deputies say Jones then turned his car towards the deputies and proceeded to put the pedal to the metal, ramming the vehicle the officers were driving. Kind of got your way to take someone's life is kind of next level. People near Hilton Oaks Baptist Church like Kelsey and Mayuri never saw anything out of the ordinary, but are in shock that a man of the cross can be such a sinner. He's someone that's held to a higher standard and supposed to lead the community. It shouldn't be getting DUIs and trying to run over police officers. And turns out this isn't Jones's first rodeo, as the pastor already has a whopping total of eight prior drinking and driving offenses. In my book, strike three, you're out because innocent people are being killed by drunk drivers. And no one here at the church could be reached for comment. But in the meantime, we're told that Jones is facing a one million dollars bond. Victor Williams, local four. All right, Victor. Now to the latest on the coronavirus pandemic. The state of Michigan is reporting 9,137 new cases of the virus. This is a three day total. We're averaging about 3,000. 46 or so cases per day. We've lost 36 more lives. 18 of those are from a review of records. There are currently 83 new COVID-19 outbreaks in Michigan schools. Meanwhile, Merck says it has asked the FDA to authorize emergency use of its experimental antiviral pill to treat COVID-19 in adults. And while much of the U.S. is seeing a decrease in COVID cases, there are a handful of states where numbers are still rising, and Michigan is one of them. Also on that list, Minnesota, Pennsylvania, Colorado, and Montana, where the situation is so bad, they've called in the National Guard. I've been activated for fires. I've been activated for floods. I've been to Iraq. It's just when you thought you'd seen it all. Here we are at a hospital uh, helping out with their logistical needs. 
While parts of the country are still struggling with the Delta variant, a new treatment may be available later this year. Merck is asking the FDA to authorize emergency use for its COVID-19 pill. The drug maker says a study involving 700 patients found the antiviral treatment reduced the risk of hospitalization or death from COVID by 50 percent. But experts caution it would not replace the need for vaccines. Remember the vaccine is virtually 99 percent effective at preventing hospitalization. So an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. You'd much rather prevent getting the illness than treating it once you've already gotten it. And efforts to increase the nation's vaccination rate continue. The director of the National Institutes of Health is appealing directly to those citing religion as a reason to avoid the shot. If you've prayed to God to give you protection against COVID-19 and along come these vaccines, created by science, which God has given us the ability to do, and they're incredibly safe and effective. Maybe that was the answer to prayer. Well, the FDA's advisory panel will meet later this week to discuss boosters for Moderna and Johnson & Johnson and hear data on the effectiveness of mixing different brands of vaccine. The panel will meet again on the 26th to review Pfizer's data on vaccines for children ages 5 to 11. Well, some parts of Michigan uh, could be getting some stormy weather today. Yeah, Paul Gross uh, says around here, though, we're in the clear, right, Paul? <laughs> yeah, we're not going to get any of that severe weather tonight. And in fact, look at these numbers for today. We had a high of 80 at Metro, 65 the low. Now, that 80 did not set a record, but if we don't drop below 65 before midnight, we're going to set a record for the warmest low temperature for this day. And then if you add these two numbers together, divide by two, that's the average temperature for the day. We would also set a record for the warmest average temperature for October 11th. So we still potentially could finish this day with record breaking temperatures. And we're still in the mid 70s to near 80 degrees across the area. Dew points in the 60s. It feels like July out there. And then here's the weather that Kim was just talking about. You can see all of this weather is heading to the west of us. It's heading north, but it's going to stay west of us. And some of these boxes, you see that right there, that red box right there, that's a tornado warning with a tornado on the ground, but nothing but quiet weather for us this evening with temps falling through the 70s. Don't forget, local forecasters app will not only let you see our own radar, our real-time radar showing our area, but you can go anywhere around the country. In fact, you can even go to Europe and see what's going on over there. The app is free. Just go to the App Store, search under WDIV. See you back here in a few, guys. Okay, Paul. Three people in Metro Detroit are facing charges in connection to voter fraud. Attorney General Dana Nessel says Nancy Williams was requesting and controlling absentee ballots for legally incapacitated people who were under her care. The AG's office says she submitted 26 ballot applications to nine city and township clerks in Wayne and Oakland counties trying to have the ballots mailed directly to her. Also in Wayne County, Carolis Clark, admitted to signing and returning her grandson's absentee ballot, even though he voted in person. In Macomb County, nursing home employee Trine Rainey is accused of filling out absentee voter applications for residents without consulting them first. Since the local Ford Defender showed you this unhealthy scene in Highland Park, the lot behind several takeout places has been a lot more clean. Neighbors were having to deal with the odors from raw chicken and other discarded foods only being picked up once a week. People living near Woodward and Beresford do not want to see this recurring problem return. Local four defender Sean Light tonight, where he's getting results and help for people in that neighborhood. Sean. Jason, good to see you. This area already looking and smelling a lot better than it did last week. There are plenty of people now who want to dig into this issue to help this neighborhood to make sure it doesn't keep happening. People living near this disgusting mess in Highland Park tell us the stench from the rotting food tossed in this dumpster and parking lot is so overwhelming, it's forced them to cancel outdoor plans. We showed you the mess last Friday, rotting food from a chicken place and a Little Caesars. Raina Alexander owns Soul Cafe in the same plaza. She refuses to add to the pile that's attracting rats. Because I'm the type of person I actually pack up my garbage and I haul it away. The mess we showed you last week got cleaned up. HP then ticketed businesses. Even Raina got a ticket. They took the ticket away because I was able to distinguish this isn't my garbage. And the police who are in this area, they, they always know, you know, it's not me. So I was lucky to get out of that ticket. I just hope there's not another one coming. We asked Little Caesars why not package up the food in industrial strength bags. That's exactly what they're doing today. Waste management saw our report. They want to help by adding more dumpsters or picking up the trash more often. 
back here live in our conversation with waste management today. They say they want to get in touch with the property owner here, see what the needs are, and see if they can help solve this problem once and for all for this neighborhood. We're live tonight. Sean Lay, Local 4 Defenders, back to you. Absolutely, and I'm sure they appreciate it. Good work, Sean. Two new laws take effect today involving school buses with the goal of keeping children safe as they head to school. One allows police to use video from cameras on the outside of buses to see if a driver needs to be ticketed for going past an extended stop arm. There will also be signs on bus doors making it clear someone cannot walk onto a school bus without permission. Breaking either rule could get you a $500 ticket. Well, does it seem like flooding has become more of a problem in recent years? Yes, and a new study <laughs> looks at how the risk of flooding is changing and what it means for infrastructure across the U.S. Plus, pieces of, of a local family's history stolen along with this backpack from inside their car. Next, what thieves took and what the family is doing to try to recover something that cannot be replaced.